Before trying to understand the monsters in Silent Hill 1, it is necessary to first understand that they are a manifestation of Cheryl Mason's subconscious mind. This also includes a buried form of Alessa Gillespie's memories. As such, the monsters will be born from Cheryl or Alessa's experiences in life. Some of these experiences will be more associated with Alessa, others with Cheryl. In general, the names Cheryl and Alessa can be used interchangeably. The Air Screamer is a manifestation of Cheryl's fear of flying dinosaurs, such as pterodactyls. The fear was formed based on the books she was reading, for example in the car during the intro video. The Bloodsucker is one of the harder monsters to explain in the game. Its focus is just to feed on blood and it will choose any source for this. It differs from most of the monsters in the game in that it will completely ignore Harry. It seems to represent an umbilical cord and symbolises the growing god in Alessa. It evolves into the sewer monster in Silent Hill 3. The creeper symbolises the base fear of insects and bugs that Cheryl has, specifically insects inclined to attack. It's derived from memories of insect specimens in Alessa's room. Found in the basement of the hospital, the fridge monster seems to be another representation of the god growing in Alessa and what will happen if it escapes. Strangely, the monster has been stabbed with a dagger, the dagger of Malachor. If this dagger is taken out, Harry will be killed, unless the chain binding the monster in the cupboard is restored using the Ring of Contract. Clearly this is a ritual with two symbols, a phallic symbol represented by the dagger and a yonic symbol represented by the Ring of Contract. This ritual most likely represents the reversal of the impregnation process, but it remains one of the more mysterious creatures in Silent Hill 1. It evolves into the monster in the locker in Silent Hill 3. The float stinger is manifested from childhood memories of Alessa, being one of the insect specimens used in the taxidermy displays that decorate her room. Brought to life in Silent Hill, it has become malignant and gigantic. It represents Alessa's transition through the pupil form of Cheryl into a powerful supernatural figure. Alessa is represented by the adult float stinger and Cheryl by the twin feeler. The grey child is the original version of the claw finger and represents the same thing. Its sound effect is the laughter of children played backward. It carries a knife as a weapon, unlike the claws of the claw finger. It represents school bullying and bears some resemblance to the hanged scratcher, though the reason for this resemblance remains unclear. The groaner appears as a large dog with no skin and has two meanings. The first is it represents Cheryl's general fear of dogs, and the second is that it represents the pain of a lesser having her skin burned. The Hanged Scratcher represents a fear of things that dwell in the sewer where it is found, such as frogs and lizards. It has a stance and sound that is somewhat frog-like, though crawls around on the ceiling much like a lizard. It seems to also be some type of evolution of the Grey Children, but a more corrupted and potent form. The Incubator is the end boss of the game if the player receives the bad ending. It's basically the mother of God and resembles a feminine, angelic figure. It represents Alessa's vision of what the mother of God should look like and is contrasted with how she actually looks. The Incubus in general culture is a demon that impregnates a woman, but is also a liar. It lies in order to impregnate a woman with a demonic seed. Curiously, the Incubus in Silent Hill more closely resembles artistic renderings of the demon Baphomet than most portrayals of Incubi. In the occult, Baphomet represents the union of sperm and egg, thus pregnancy. 
It's an interesting symbolism that the incubus is basically the demon Baphomet born as a god. This would suggest that it is a false demonic god. The larval stalker represents non-physical bullying at school, such as teasing. It teases Harry by running around making squeaking sounds and being difficult to see due to being partially transparent. Found mostly in the school area and rarely in the sewers, the mumbler resembles small demons from fairy tales. It is a representative of Alessa's experiences being bullied by other children during her time in school. As a result of this, it attacks very much like a school bully, grabbing onto and striking at Harry. Interestingly, the sound effect used when the mumbler notices Harry is children's laughter played backwards. The evolved version of the air screamer. The night flutter appears only in the other world and is considerably strengthened when compared to its counterpart. It has a dual representation of representing the negative view Alessa has of the people around her and also represents the age difference between Cheryl and Alessa. The night flutter is to the air screamer what Cheryl is to Alessa. Much like the puppet nurse, the parasitized doctor represents Alessa's negative view of hospitals and doctors due to her treatment by them. It attacks using a scalpel as a weapon. Puppet Sybil Bennett is corrupted using a parasite in the same way as the parasitized doctor and puppet nurse. The reason for this is that she is a member of the public institutions that Alessa generally perceives as being evil. Much like the parasitized doctor, the puppet nurse represents Alessa's experiences with the medical system and general fear of hospital staff. Like the parasitized doctor, puppet nurse is infected with a growth out of it. The exact symbolic meaning of the parasite is debated often, some suggesting it represents Alessa's views of the growing god inside her or of a general evil demonic growth. In truth, it represents both of these things as it represents demonic possession, as parasites and possessions go hand in hand. In particular, when it comes to the doctors, nurses and police officers, the parasitic growth represents demonic sabotage of these people by the cult. The interesting thing is that only members of public institutions seem to be able to be infected by the parasite. It seems to be symbolic of a corruption of their roles in these institutions by the cult. Naturally, the nurse and doctors are hunchbacked because they would be leaning over her in any medical procedure. The romper represents Alessa's fear of adults. It runs around trying to grab and tackle Harry to the ground, remaining always in a bent over stance to symbolize an adult leaning down. It's basically like an adult pretending to be the boogeyman. The split head is a manifestation of a creature from a fairy tale a lesser red in which a knight slew a monster. Harry trying to rescue his daughter symbolizes the knight saving the princess in the story. The split represents the split between Cheryl and Alessa. The stalker is a version of the mumbler, but is also partially invisible. It represents the growing power of the other world and the collapse of the normal world. Thus, creatures in the other world, in the place nowhere, are starting to become invisible. The twin feeler is the pupae version of the float stinger and is based on specimens found in Alessa's room. It is associated with fears of insects, but also symbolizes the threat of the growing god. It escapes at the end of the battle and later grows into the float stinger. The worm head is an evolved version of the groaner, and the symbol of the worm head represents further rot and corruption. The groaner is to Cheryl what the worm head is to Alessa.